Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel and today we'll cover introduction to information theory. There are two topics we would like to go over, which is discrete information source and entropy. So before we go there, I'll just give you a general background about uh, uh, information theory and we'll then cover discrete information sources and entropy. So information and forward error control, information theory and forward error control. Usually we need to know which is which. So if we look at information processing system, we have information source and then we have the information sink. To go from the source to the sink, we have to go through the channel. Now, to go through the channel, we need to prepare the information. So we have a modulator, demodulator, or encoder and decoder. There are two types of coding we do. Uh, we do source coding, and that's basically compression or data compression. It's a totally different concept than channel coding. Here, our objective is to compress the data. While here, in channel coding, our objective is to control the error, whether we do error correction or error detection. Whenever we mention coding, we should be able, we should be careful not to confuse source and channel coding, which is compression and error control, with cryptography or encryption. Because here, our objective is different than the objective here. And the third part would like to hide the data. So we have encryption. Now, well, let's ask a few questions. What is the reducible complexity below which the signal cannot be compressed? If we are dealing with compression and we want to know the limits of compression, then we are dealing with information theory because we want to know how much information are there. And the concept entropy is very handy there. If you ask the second question, which is well, what is the ultimate transmission rate for reliable communication over a noisy channel? Then here we are dealing with error control and the question of capacity or the terminology of capacity become important. So entropy for compression and capacity for error control coding. Uh, in this chapter or in this part, we'll cover the two main topics, information theory and error control coding. Usually we start with information theory because it's a source coding and then we do the channel coding. Now we, are, we will start with the basics of information theory. So what is a discrete information source? Uh, it's an information source and it's discrete, so it, it, it produces discrete possible outcomes. And information content, we can tell how many information, how much is the information there. Because we could have data and data is not information. So information content is a measure of the amount of surprise or unpredictability or uncertainty. So if I give you information, I try to answer your uncertainty. So an example, if somebody says Riyadh is the capital of Saudi Arabia, is this informative or not? If you already know the information, then I'm adding, I'm adding a little to you. And if, if, for example, you are going for a trip and I give you a, an excellent weather condition or forecast before, that is also could be very informative to you. So how much is this adding to your knowledge is part of what we call information. So information theory relies on probability theory. And we start asking the question of what's the difference between information and knowledge. And the question is, what's the difference between data and information? If you note here on the right hand side, we're saying we have data in this little pyramid. We collect data and then we need to organize them and process to extract information to gain knowledge and have value. So we have data, information, knowledge and value. So back to the question, what's the difference between data and information? We can say that data needs processing to extract information. Data could be repetitions. We need to extract the information from the data. And in information theory, not all data carries information. As I just mentioned, it could be just mere or pure repetition. Example, if we have a source that always generate one symbol. So what's the information content? Zero. If you have a friend that always says no, if you tell him let's go for lunch, and you know he's going to say no, so then there is not there is not much added by by asking or getting the answer to the question. Information content of data increases with uncertainty of the transmitted symbol. So if you have one symbol, there is no uncertainty. If you have two, three, four, five, 
the more the symbol is unexpected we get more information now again to the discrete information sources we can define information sources the information source is this is, is the part that outputs a set of symbols we have finite discrete source the output belongs to a finite set of symbols emitted at the discrete time instances for example a finite could be selecting a binary number but if you use an integer number you know we have infinite number of integers so it's not a finite we have the source alphabet it's the set the finite set of symbols like in binary we have 0 and 1 and the cardinality is the size number of elements how many how many possible outcomes are there example if we have the set a and we have small a 0 up to kept up small a m minus 1 so how many symbols do we have what is the alphabet what's the cardinality uh, we can write it this way just like an absolute value which this is the cardinality of a equals to m number of symbols number of alphabet elements that are there Uh, we can also look at the discrete information source as a binary source as an example a source which is binary b then it has two elements and the cardinality becomes two uh, if we look at the signs at the same a time sequence of, of of the outcome of a discrete information source then we have this s0 s1 this is the first symbol second third fourth st and so on so every one of these elements belong is one element of from the alphabet and the alphabet is a0 up to a m so this is a up to m minus one because the cardinality the cardinality is capital m every one of these elements would have a probability so i could use zero and one with equal probability in a binary example so become 0 0.5 0 0.5 probability of one of them is 0 0.5 but in general we need to assign probability to each so we have this could be 0 0.25, 0 0.75, and so on. So we say that the probability the symbol emits a m is probability of m, which is uh, the given probability of that symbol. Of course, if you have many symbols, capital M, then we, we can assign probability to each one of them. And of course, the sum of these probabilities should equal to 1. Why? Because we have to select one of the symbols. Okay, now let's look at the type of sources. We have stationary sources, which means the probabilities are not function of time. So we have the set of probabilities, they are always fixed. We have synchronous sources, which means the time interval between every symbol and the other is, or source alphabet is fixed. Source emits a new symbol at fixed time intervals, just like the time intervals here are synchronous. We have also asynchronous sources that produces symbols at time instances that are not uh, fixed so the time instant from here to here is different than the time from here to here source emit symbols at different time intervals and we can trick we can approximate this example of of uh, asynchronous by including dummy or null characters to approximate synchronous so we can try to make it look like synchronous by including some symbols in between Okay, now we speak about the entropy. The entropy is uh, given by the following equation. And the guy who worked on entropy was Claude Shannon, 1948, is considered the founder of information theory, the father of information theory, if you like. The amount of information, the entropy is defined to be the amount of information uh, we, uh, we can define the entropy related to the information and the amount of information is inversely proportional to the probability of, of an event. So information of a symbol A is given by the log of base 2 of 1 over pi. So it's, it's inversely related. Why did, we use the, what, why did we choose the base 2? That would sort very much with binary. This is also called self-information. So the entropy is the average amount of information conveyed by Per, sim, per uh, source symbol because here we are taking one symbol if you take the average of all of them then we have the entropy related to the source so if you take the average the expected value of that and you multiply it by the probability and you sum over so again the entropy is the average information per symbol 
and we multiply the probability to get the average so this is pm and we take this is the definition of entropy so we are extracting this definition and i'm writing it here this is something that you need to remember the entropy and how to calculate the entropy remember the base is log 2. the entropy unit is bits because we're using base 2. if natural if you use len instead of log base 2 then we can use nets because we are using not bits but rather natural units okay now entropy is a measure of uncertainty so the higher the entropy it means the source have higher uncertainty and if you have a source that emit only one symbol you can guess what the entropy is going to be and why it is zero so examples of entropy find the entropy of source a that emits one symbol and then h of a should of as expected zero because there is no information there and recall that if you do your calculation that you want to find log base 2 of something you can find the natural logarithm and divide by ln 2 this is the change of basis for logarithmic scale everybody is familiar with that and also you need to remember the identity that log of x times log x is uh, in the limit will approach zero so in our case we have if we substitute uh, we get the information to be equal to zero because we have one over p log times p which is one and if you substitute you should get one you can prove this you should get the answer to be zero now the second example is find the entropy of a two array uh, source with probability of equal probability 0.5.5 and of course this is going to give you one bit and if you choose for example entropy of four array equally likely sources of course it should give you two bits you can prove this by going through the probability what if those probabilities are not equally probable then we have less uncertainty because some of them are more probable if we go through the equation of the entropy and substitute we'll get we expect the answer to be less than two so the answer is going to be 1.6477 bits which is, as I, as I said, expected to be less than two. Entropy of a binary memoryless source. A binary memoryless source is a source with a symbol is zero, because it's a binary source with probability of P0. So the second symbol is one. It's a binary, it's either blue or green. It will have probability P1, but we can write P1 in terms of P0 because the sum of probability should equal to one. All right? So we can say, that the entropy h of a we substitute in the equation of the entropy if said, instead of saying one over we can just say minus sign and instead of saying p1 we can replace it with its equivalent so this is now is called is function of only one variable which is p0 probability of the first symbol and if we plot this as function of p0 we get the following sketch here as an exercise sketch the entropy so p of course we know its probability should should, should be between zero and one can take a discrete, some discrete values and we plot this expression in MATLAB and this is the curve that we expect to get you get less entropy because one is the first symbol is high probability as you go to the middle we have the highest uncertainty and then it goes back to zero here are some notes the entropy of a source a with cardinality equal to m is always limited between zero and log base 2 of m and i leave the proof proof for this for the last slide if entropy is less than number of assigned bits per source symbol then the data can be compressed so if you have four bits which can be represented by two bits log if you have sorry four symbols uh, if if it turns out that we have entropy less than two then this data is com is can be compressed like in the example we had before in the previous uh, uh, example the source had four symbols and we got the entropy to be 1.6477 which means we can compress the data information efficiency we can define the information efficiency of a source as the ratio of the entropy of the source to the average number of binary digital binary digits so for example in this if you take the same example the average number of bits and which can be represented is 
two, assuming that we have uh, Oleko problem, we have two. But now we the entropy is 1.644. So if you divide the two together, you get 82.387, which means the there is 70.6 approximately percent that are redundant. So this is the percentage of information we have relative to uh, to the case that are they are all equal. Lemma, consider an MRE source A. The maximum entropy is log base two. And it occurs when symbols are equal. So this will occurs when the symbols are equal. Leave you an exercise so that if an MRE source A, the distribution of probabilities so that if an MRE source A, the distribution of, 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 the, of the probabilities is given uh, by the following. That will, that will maximize the entropy. So if you have binary, it's 1 half, 1 half, and MRE, it's 1 over M. Okay? That will maximize the entropy of A. Extension of discrete memoryless sources. Now, what if there is an extension? There is a time extension. If a source, if a sim, if symbols are emitted from the same source and probabilities of source do not change over time, then the entropy of a sequence will be less than or equal to n times that in, in, uh, entropy of the individual, and it becomes equal exactly if things are statistically independent, and that's called the memoryless source because you read the first one. You have no memory, whether it's 0 or 1. The second one, they are independent. This is called memoryless source. Now, uh, this is what I, prove, or I, I promised before, that we need to prove for an, M, for an information source with alphabet A and cardinality A symbols, uh, what is the range of possible entropies? Now, this is the equation for the entropy. We know that uh, the symbol property is between 0 and 1, which means P is always going to be less than 1, which means that 1 over B is going to be less, greater than 1, which means this log is going to be positive. For each symbol, we have a positive number here. So if you add the entropy, you add, you're adding positive numbers. There is no place for negative. So the minimum value should be 0. And for the case of maximum entropy that occurs when we have the plot equal to 1 over the cardinality of M, and if we substitute, we get the following uh, equation. Of course, we are summing A times. So this is going to A multiplied by 1 over A, because we are summing the uh, cardinality of A times. So this would cancel, and we get log base 2 of A. So this is the minimum, and this is the maximum. So the, uh, the range of entropy is given by the following equation. Okay, thank you for being good listeners. We have covered uh, the entropy, and we have also touched on memoryless sources. So um, I hope that that was clear. You can go back to the videos if, if you want to repeat a few things, and we'll see you in coming videos.